Direct Drive for free? We're printing one today, and we're starting right now. Hey guys, my name is Brian. Welcome to The First Layer, the show that explores the world of 3D printing. And today is no different because we're going to be exploring this mod that I decided to perform on my Ender 3. So as you can see, I've got it printing a cube right now. I was trying to solve a problem. So like many of you, I suffer from stringing on my prints and I've seen a lot of discussion online about direct drive versus Bowden setups. And frankly, I just didn't want to spend any money. So after doing some digging, I found a model file on Thingiverse as a drop-in replacement to make your Ender 3, or in some cases CR10s as well, direct drive with only a single 3D printed part, uh, which you'll see here. Now this part you'll see on my Ender 3 right up front here was available on Thingiverse, and I'll post a link in the description below. It was printed on this Ender 3 before I converted it from a Bowden to a direct drive. Now the reason I decided to do this mod was to try and resolve stringing. Now, for those of you who don't know, stringing is either a result of too high of a temperature or your attractions are too short. And in some cases, I found the slippage of the filament within the Bowden tube would cause inconsistent extrusions on that. And a direct drive is supposed to resolve that. So if you look closely up here, so the idea behind the direct drive extruder is to reduce the distance between your hot end and your extruder assembly. And you'll see that we still do have a little bit of Bowden tube in here, so the name can be confusing. So the general idea is to reduce the distance from the hot end right through to the extruder. And this is done by shortening the length between that section. So we've got a little piece of Capricorn tubing in between two Bowden couplers right where our extruder is. Now there are several model files available on Thingiverse, but the particular reason I picked this one was because it required no additional equipment than what already came on your Ender 3 in this case. And that will still apply to a CR10, a CR10S, or any of Creality or similar to Creality hot ends. Now the reason I picked this particular model is because number one, it's a single part, easy to print, and number two, because it required no additional parts from the Ender 3. In fact, I just went and unbolted the motor and attached it over on this one and cut my Bowden tube to length. So let's have a closer look at how to print and install this model. All right, so we've got Cura loaded up here and we're gonna go ahead and use the Thingiverse extension to go ahead and find this model. You can check out the video in the link above about how we installed this. So to quickly find this model, we'll go ahead and search for the Thing file 3443609. Go ahead and click details. So go ahead and click the direct drive BL Touch Remix V2 link. The V3 was a beta test and I haven't personally vouched for it. I would say stick with the V2 for now. Once added, we can go ahead and close the window and we'll have our model on the build plate. Now for specific slicer settings, I like to use tree supports myself. However, any traditional support will work fine. So to print this, you will need to use supports. I personally like to use tree supports. However, traditional supports will work fine for this. And you can print this in PLA, PETG. In my case, I had some spare hips lying around, so I decided to give that a try. Bearing in mind that your motor probably shouldn't be running hot to begin with, this can be printed with PLA without it overheating or warping. So let's stick with PLA for now and print. Now I did find that this print did improve my print quality, but there are some pros and cons of going this route. So what do I think about this mod? Well, in the end, this mod did resolve my issues with stringing and extrusion issues, but it comes with a price. So let's go through those. So the biggest issue you're gonna see right away with installing this direct drive mod is your loss in Z build height. Due to the motor now being located on top of your X gantry, you're naturally gonna hit a point where that motor is gonna come in contact with the top of your bar, or in my case, uh, way up screen here. So that can be a downside for a lot of people on what is already a rather small Z build height for this printer. Uh, we'll talk in future episodes about doing something crazy like building it a little taller, but for the time being, it's an acceptable risk. Now the other big issue I've noticed is that if you are printing with a filament that's a little more tricky, has a tendency to clog or cause issues, it's going to require a few more steps to go and unclog that hot end. So if we go and have a close look, so as we discussed earlier, there is not a lot of room between your extruder now and your hot end. However, if you get a clog, in order to get down into this Bowden tube, you're actually going to have to remove your motor and remove your Bowden tube again. So that's kind of a, a big nuisance if you have a bad set 
of filament. But do I think the cons of this mod actually outweigh the positives? I don't think so because again, it's a 3D printed mod and it only takes about four screws to unclog. And if you're having clogging issues, maybe it's not the extruder. Maybe there's something else you have to take a look at, at down there, such as your fan being plugged up or heat creep or various other issues. But this was kind of nice. Now, another positive I didn't really talk about here is if you do want that tight control and start playing with uh, flexible filaments or anything of that sort. As you can see, I only have a tiny amount of Capricorn tubing used on this. So you're actually going to save a little bit of money if you want to go a fancier route with the Bowden. And with this too, with the way that it's pressure fit together, you're not going to have any Bowden tube slippage. So if you've ever had to go and buy more Bowden tube and recut it and hope that your clip holds it in place and print all those Bowden clips, that doesn't exist with this because we're actually using the pressure between the two points to hold the tube in there. So that's kind of an unintended bonus side effect that I really liked about the, this mod. One additional pro of this modification is that it requires zero firmware modification. So for those of you still running the original Creality board, you're not going to have to go and flash with an ICSP programmer or anything. It's just going to work. So again, when I said this is zero additional tools required, I also meant software. So zero tools outside of filament, okay fine, it costs 25 cents. 25 cent mod is going to be this video. So with that being said, I have to give this thing a score and you know what? This has become a daily mod for this printer and for a couple of my other Ender 3 style printers, maybe even my Ender 5, we'll see about that in the future. So when it comes down to scoring this mod, I gotta rank it high at a four out of five hot ends. The reason I rank it so high is because number one, it's easy to do, number two, it's cheap, and number three, it's reversible. So any issues that you have with it, you can always back right back to your stock build with very little modification. And with that, I have my question of the day for you guys. What do you prefer, Bowden setups or direct drive? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you know when new content comes out. Hey, I just want to throw a special thanks out to Spool3D for sharing the space today. You can check them out at spool3d.ca and get all the parts that you don't need for this mod, such as printers, parts, filament, you name it. Check them out at spool3d.ca. And if modifications are the kind of things you like to do, check out this video above on modifying your hot end to better improve and print on other materials such as TPU, hips, pet G, you name it. It'll do it all. Check it out above. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time and remember that the first layer is your foundation to a great print.